All right, so today I'm going to set up a new tool post for my lathe. Uh, I have one of those mini lathes, and this is this is a miniature version of the tool posts. I'll show you what I'm swapping out here. So I'm going to be swapping out this guy here. Uh, you know, I've cut a lot of stuff on this lathe, as you could guess from the shreds here, which I've you know made which I've uh, recycled over and over again. And this this little tool post is, I mean, it does the job, but it, you know, I have multiple cuts in some of the pieces that I do, and I just need to be able to do the work a little bit faster. And I just thought I'd get one of those little, uh, you know, quick change tool posts to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this unit off of the cross slide here, and I'm going to install the quick change tool post, which is this guy here. Now I got this stuff from Mini Machine Shop, and uh, there's a couple of different, you know, brands of these uh, tool posts available. But you know, I trust Mini Machine Shop because they've they've got stuff just for machinists. They don't shell, you know, vacuum cleaner parts, all that stuff. You know, it's not a side item for them. It's their main business. And the other thing too is that. Uh, you'll see some tool posts out there that are, you know, basically, I mean, these things are all made in China, but you want to get stuff that's manufactured uh, to where you can actually have something that's usable. And there's an aluminum version of this. They, they actually make these out of aluminum for lightweight. But, you know, I'm more of a guy who likes to use uh, iron because when you're cutting, uh, there can be a certain harmonic that happens, you know, that gets through the tool and to the machine, and it can cause some vibration. And I'm just kind of proactive about, you know, stopping any problems before they start. So instead of getting the lightweight aluminum version, I got the cast iron version. So this set here comes with, you know, one of these guys here, which is, you know, I'm going to put a cutter in. This one here is the same style. You could actually put a straight cutter in, but it's actually, if you look at it at the side here, it's, it's actually curved on the bottom. So you can put a straight cutter or a curved bottom. Uh, what I ended up doing was I got a, an extra one of these for a straight cutter, you know. And then you've got this one here to cut the piece. This one here is a knurling piece. You can use the knurl that's in it, or you can get one of those knurls that actually knurls it from both sides. That's what I'm going to do. I don't like to put uh, side pressure on pieces that I'm doing with a lathe. I'd rather have it, you know, knurled around so that... Uh, so that I get a nice, you know, I don't have to put pressure on any bearings that are in the lathe. And then this guy here is a is a boring setup. Uh, you can put a boring bar in there or a drill bit, whichever, you know. But uh, obviously it's designed for one thing, so it's going to have a boring bar, basically. And, you know, the other, the other way to bore is to use a to use a chuck, which I'll be doing for drill bits. But when I set boring bars up, I'm going to be using that piece. Now, as you can see, quick release, that means that these slide over this here, just in case you're not familiar with how these work, okay? Slides over that, and then, you know, it's set, and then you lock it in. Now, the trick about setting one of these guys up is that you have to set it to where the tool is going to be riding at the correct part of the piece that you cut. Now I cut a lot of hexagon shaped uh, pieces here, okay, so uh, I want it to be at the center of, I want the tool to be aimed at the center of this piece. So obviously there's, you know, there's a rise and there's a fall. Uh, I want it to be, the top of the sh tool to be aimed exactly at the center. So to do that, you have to adjust the pieces, you know, the bits as they go into these holders. So I've already got this one set up here. So uh, the way the adjustment works is they come, you know, from the factory at, at a whatever setting, okay? But the way the adjustment works is once this goes into the chuck, yeah, maybe I'll set this up here. Let me, uh, let me do this so you can, I'll let my, Okay, all right, so once you set it into the chuck, you want the tool to go down to the right height. Okay, so this is the release here, okay. So the, the, the 
this part is always going to slide to the bottom of it so it stops on, uh, let me see if I can show you that it stops right here at the bottom right there okay so to set the tool height correctly you have to adjust this spindle to where it touches the top of this and adjust the height of the tool so that you get the, the tool height set correctly. So I've already adjusted two of these, like I said. This one here, you know, is gonna go in there. I'm gonna lock it down with these uh, with these little hex head screws here, okay? This one's set, but the other ones I've got to adjust. So, but the first thing I'm gonna do, before I do any of that, obviously, is I'm gonna swap out the tool posts. So let's get into doing that here. Uh, this guy here, is the original tool post so you know obviously I got to take it off so I'm just going to go ahead and remove it takes this guy off here okay and then I'm just going to remove the uh, I'm just going to remove the stud okay now uh, one of the things that I discovered is this uh, this setup here actually comes from the factory with a with a base. It fits a number of different lathes, so uh, there's there's a couple of different scenarios of what it's going to fit. So it comes from the factory uh, with a base, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the base, and I'm going to take the stud out of here. The stud in this is longer than the stud in that one. I'm going to use the stud. From one and exchange it onto the other. So uh, this guy here, that's the base. Just going to take it off. Going to remove the stud. Okay. So as you can see, I already actually swapped it out before I. I kind of did a test run before. So that stud is actually longer than this stud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the longer stud. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in here. Whoops. Actually, I'm going to twist this into the base. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, turn that into the base. And then I'm going to... I've taken the bottom piece off of this now. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on my midi. This, this is the correct setup for this lathe. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide it on. Bam, it's on. Get the nut. You know, put that on. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to lock it down. So the way this works is you can turn the tool by releasing this nut, and then it'll allow you to turn it. There's actually two different uh, areas where you can put tools. So you can actually have... Uh, you can't have two two tools on this at one time. I don't know why they set it up to where you have uh, where you can set up two tools because you're only going to use one tool at a time. It's a quick release. But anyway, they did that for some reason. Okay, the tool goes on here. Okay, this locks down. That makes this this axis uh, locked in. Okay, here's your cross slide. Okay, which I've got right now to cut at a thirty degree angle. You know, it's normally it's set at a ninety. Anyway. Uh, Put this on, okay, that's that's in place. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these guys so that it's holding the tool and I'll kind of show you how it drops in. So let me just come back on camera here in a second uh, after I get this tightened up. Okay, so now I've set up uh, the cutting tools. Okay, this, this one's actually set at the right height and so is the one that's in the chuck right now. This guy here is for the is for the side cutting or is for the, the parting tool, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. Now, as I said, the way that you set up the height of this to drop up and down is with this wheel here. So you turn this wheel up or down this shank right here and then lock it with this screw. And then when you put it in there, you're gonna get a positive lock. It's gonna go to the, you know, it's gonna set against the bottom of this. And then that's how low it's going to drop, and that's going to set where the height of this tool is. 
So the same with this guy here. I haven't set it yet, you know, and the other tool I've got in there. Same with the boring bar. Same with all of these, okay? That's the way you do that. I probably jumped ahead of myself when I was mentioning that early, but earlier, but it is an important factor because you've got to get it to be on center. Then once you're once you've got it set up to verify it, you know you could just run a cut across the face of the work, and uh, as you can see here, nice smooth cut right to the center, and uh, you know we're good to go. So that one's set correctly. And uh, you want to be, you know, right dead nuts on. You don't want to be off on that. And the other thing that's important here is uh, these slides here, you want to verify that if there's any yaw in the slides, and there's always going to be some amount of yaw, obviously, because you, it, it's a slide, you want to make sure that you have uh, a limited amount of, of yaw in that slide, in both this one, you know, the X and the Y coordinates. So... That's a very important factor. Otherwise, you're going to have a tool that's going to chatter. Now, if you already had a tool set up in here, it was already set up. These should be set up correctly already, but just verify that before you put the new tool on. Okay, so now uh, I'm just going to put this, this little piece on here. Now, it's important to get the tool in here and try to get all four of these locked in. It's kind of a short stroke to the cutting bit itself. I usually like to have it out a little bit more, but you know the object is to have the cutting bit as close to the tool as possible anyway, just so that the workpiece cannot get leverage on this and cause a vibration or cause it to move in any way. And the shorter the distance that the cutting end of the tool is from this, obviously the less leverage it's gonna have. Okay, so this part here, I'm just gonna take this stud here, I'm gonna set I'm going to end up setting this tool aside with lathe pieces. I can kind of see now that uh, you know I'm going to need to get a little bit more organized with these tools so that I can I can just quick grab these things and set them up for the lathe uh, because you know I've kind of been I've kind of got it all put back in here, but I really didn't organize it very well. And to really be you know efficient as a, as a doing some machine work. You know, you want to have this set up to where there's a tray or whatever you put these guys in here. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and loosen this guy up. This guy just slides right in there. Yeah, just loosen it up some more. Now it's a parting tool, so I'm going to slide this out a little bit more so I can get to the center. I, I cut up to, uh, I think it's 3 8 stock, so I want to make sure I can cut to the center of that. Not have any problems. So now that guy's locked in. So basically, once I get this here, I'm going to have to set up the height adjustment, just like I did in the other tools, to where this part gets to the center of the uh, workpiece it cuts it exactly the center so setting up the height like I said is turning this wheel turning the nut down to lock this in place and then I'm all set so that's it that's the that's the new uh, quick release chuck hope you learned something about uh, you know how these tools work and their setup you know there's not really that much to it but uh, it's hopefully having this video out there is going to help you guys so thanks for watching and uh, come again.